Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On, another regular edition, Monday edition of Five Things We Learned. Of course, this week it'll be about the Newcastle game. I just want to start by saying, on very few occasions this year have I not wanted to do an episode of Five Things We Learned, uh, but this is one of those occasions, and I want to spin that into a positive. It just shows how many times this season have come away after a weekend feeling fantastic. Now, of course, there's no chance to feel fantastic today. Yesterday was up there with one of the most dev devastating days uh, of my Spurs fan life, um, which is bizarre in a way because never before have we finished third. Um, but just the way it all kind of fell about, um, came about, sorry, and the way that over the last month or so I've been saying to friends, and particularly uh, Woolwich fan friends actually, who've been like, oh no, you, we'll never finish above you. I've been saying to them, actually, to be honest, the, the old Spurs part of me thinks there's only one team who could actually do that from here. And um, it's just very disappointing that that's really happened. Although after the Chelsea result, I can't help but think there was a feeling of inevitability about it. Whether I was actually open about admitting that I felt like that, I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, so it's a very disappointing day today. I had a night to sleep on it, still very disappointed. But I do know that over... The next few weeks or in a couple of weeks time especially when the euros get started um, and all our uh, five spurs players in the euro squad start playing for england i will be able to move on and remember what a great season it's been and important to remember as well that yes leicester and woolwich finished above us but think of the clubs we finished above man city chelsea manchester united and liverpool all of whom would have been favorites to finish above us at the beginning of the season, I'd say. So um, maybe Liverpool, not quite. They'd have been similar, but uh, you know, it's still been a fantastic season. Anyway, let's get into the five things that I felt we learned. None of these, I think, are gonna be huge shocks to you, because um, especially if you saw my match review yesterday, and I think we're all feeling very similar. I think we know what's going on at Spurs, but let's talk about number one. And it has to be about Deli Ali and Moussa Dembele. Um, I wanna take it, you know, not just about how Without them, there seems to be a lack of a pace, a lack of energy, uh, and overall, a lack of belief. I do, I do think that's the case, but maybe just look at how much we can learn from the fact that what they did to, to uh, not be part of these games that we've not won in, four games, what they did was completely unnecessary. And if we can take anything from all of this, it's hopefully that our squad will see, don't do that stuff. Don't do those things that get you banned for a multitude of games. It's one thing getting two yellow cards in a game and getting sent off for that, which I don't think even has happened to Spurs this season, to be honest. You know, that happens. We know that happens. You're going to pick up suspensions. But to punch someone in the stomach and to grab someone's face, you know, I don't think personally it was an eye gouge. I think if you eye gouge someone, you go with your thumbs. But, you know, to, to grab someone's face and make it look, make it seem like it might be an eye gouge, that is irresponsible. Now, Deli Ali, you're young. Hopefully you'll learn from that. Moussa Dembele, totally out of character. And uh, I'm just thinking if there's one thing that I hope not just those two, but the whole squad and the whole club will learn from these last four games, it's that if you make mistakes like that and if you lose your, your best players for games like that, uh, for as many games as that, it's going to count against you and it's going to come back to bite you on the arse. And it really has done that to us. Um, on the pitch, like I mentioned, you know, you could see it in the first 10 minutes against Newcastle, as was the case in South, against Southampton, um, just a lack of energy. That, it, it seemed like that. Uh, I've seen a lot of articles in the papers who are trying to bring back the old Pochettino's teams always fall away thing. I don't think it is that, because I think if you're talking about a team that falls away at the end of the season, you're not just talking about four games. You're talking about kind of the last 10 games. Pochettino's team, Spurs team, haven't done that. And last season, we won our last two games of the season, so I don't believe in that, actually. Uh, I don't think that's the case. But I think definitely, as Eric Dyer kind of mentioned, something went in their heads after Chelsea. Maybe it was even something really went in their heads after the West Brom equaliser. And um, certainly against Southampton and yesterday against Newcastle, just heavy-legged. And I think it's a mental thing. I don't think it's a physical thing. They just didn't really believe, I don't think, that they could uh, press the way they've been pressing all season. And Newcastle really sniffed it. I think Rafa Benitez looked at what Southampton did against us last week and he set them up exactly the same way. And uh, they were much quicker on the break than, than Southampton were and, and really nailed us. Uh, I'm not going to mention the penalty that wasn't a penalty. It doesn't really matter. You should be able to sort out your game management better 
when the, the opposition are down to 10 men so that you don't even get in that position. I remember when uh, Sissoko went through in that position, I said to the guy next to him, I was like, it's Ericsson who's chased back defending there. That is not where you want Ericsson to be. And frankly, I think that will have helped the referee make his decision that it was Christian Eriksen on one side and Vertonghen coming from the other. And it just looked awkward. Um, so I don't think that's got a great deal to do with it. Our game management wasn't good enough at that point. But the point overall is, you know, without Dembele, without Ali, you're taking away, I think, potentially £60 million worth and upwards in terms of what they're probably valued now of talent from that Spurs team. You do that you lose that energy, you lose that drive, and you lose the belief. And it's almost like the belief of a youngster who plays without fear as well. That's what I noticed, noticed the last couple of games. We didn't play without fear anymore. There seemed to be a fear of, of playing passes between the lines and trying to do something special. And Deli Ali is certainly the, the, the star who brought that into our squad this season. And that's what really made the difference, as well as you know Dembele's improvement, Dyer's improvement, and Alderweireld. But really having that star quality is, is what made us such an attacking force and have such a great goal difference overall and score so many goals this season compared to last season. So let's not act like it's the end of the world because that will come back first game next season. Deli Ali will be there, you know, God willing, with, with no injuries. So we'll have that back. Uh, so that's something uh, to be excited about if it's possible at all to get excited today. I know, I know it's not. Second point is... The mental fragility, I, I, meant, I, I mentioned it before about Eric died. the mental fragility after the dream died. Now look, the reality is this, you're going for the title, you're in a two-horse race. I know there are lots of jokes today about how Spurs are the only club who could make a three, you know, come third in a two-horse race, but they really wanted it. You know, that Lions tweet from Harry Kane, it was building and it was really building and our form was improving. They really wanted it to the point where, just like we were, they were all the players were getting excited and starting, even if they're not admitting it openly, starting to believe and then the West Brom game happened the Chelsea game happened and let's face it a lot of this game is built, uh, based not just on mentality but also the, the adrenaline inside you how focused you are how pumped up you get for games and I think they just lost all that they lost the energy from that game where Hazard scored with 10 minutes to go it was against Chelsea it was the record was there to be broken in terms of winning at Stamford Bridge and the way that the game played out with so many yellow cards and all the fights and all that kind of stuff. You can almost, I'm not going to forgive it. I'm not going to say you can forgive it, but I think it's human nature. I do. And I think that is a big reason why the legs were so heavy the last few games and why we didn't get the point we needed to come in second place. I think Pochettino will learn from this. Uh, and I think there are players in that squad who will leave, uh, which brings me on to my third point, which is, Ryan Mason and Tom Carroll. Now, I love their loyalty. I love that they're Spurs boys. I love that they've been at the club for a long time and I love how much they try. I love their attitude, all of that stuff. But what I've got to say is those boys more than any other because they're not out and out talents. They're kind of more workhorses. Tom Carroll's a great passer of the ball, um, but you know, he, he's not a kind of Deli Alley special talent. Uh, he's not got what Moussa Dembele has got. So what these boys need to make the most of their potential is they need game time. They need to be playing every week because then they will get the confidence that they need to play at their top level. Now, the reality is they are not, as we improve and go into the Champions League and hopefully you know, continue to improve points-wise next season, they are not going to get the game time they require at this club to play with confidence all the time when they come on the pitch. And as a result, I hated to see it, but... Every time Ryan Mason made a little mistake yesterday and against Southampton, the crowd were on his back. And when you're a confidence player, you know, when the crowd gets on your back, that just, you know, I know it's cliche, but it makes it even worse. And him more than most, because he doesn't have the talent to get himself out of situations. He just needs to keep passing, keep playing, get him, you know, make runs. He wasn't doing that because he knew the crowd were getting on his back. So I don't want to be as simple as to say they've got to go. I don't think it's as simple as that. But I think if I was Mauricio Pochettino, I would say to those boys, I'd say, look, you're not going to get the game time that you require, I don't think, to become the players that you can become. Tommy Carroll, if he was 19, fine. If he was Harry Winks' age, fine. More time, more squad time. Learn, learn, learn. He's 24 now, 25 soon. He had a year at Swansea last year. I was surprised that he didn't break through there, really. He didn't play enough games. He looks good on the ball, but ask yourself, is it going to happen at Spurs for those guys? I don't know. 
I feel like I don't necessarily want to lose them both because I don't want to lose all the hunger and drive in the squad from those kind of younger players um, and replace it with, with players from the outside because you don't know what you're going to get when you replace it from players who haven't played for the club before. Um, but I think certainly one of them, I'd be very surprised if one, if not both of them, didn't leave at the end of the season. And it's a shame because I do think they're good players. I think they do well uh, for other clubs if they get the game time, if they play week in, week out. In fact, I think if Ryan Mason played week in, week out in central midfield for a, a kind of middling club, um, you know, middle of the table club in the Premier League, he'd probably score between five and ten goals a season because he's a good finisher. I know what you're thinking, that Chelsea chance he missed, but he's a good finisher and he makes runs when he's confident, makes runs ahead of the striker, like he did against Sunderland earlier this season to win us that game. But when he's not playing regular games, that just doesn't happen. And, and it wasn't the squad depth wasn't quite there, unfortunately, for the last few games. Uh, my fourth point is uh, everyone's talking about we need a striker to uh, help Harry Kane. I think we need two strikers. Uh, I really do. There was those seasons where we had four strikers. You know, we had Pav, Keane, Defoe. Uh, Berbatov at various times, you know, over the course of a few years with a couple of ins and outs along the way, we had, you know, five or six top level strikers. Now we have one. Hung Min Son, I think, will always play in that role behind the front man, as will, I think, Clinton and G, if and when he becomes fit and is less raw, because he's very raw at the moment. Um, so I don't think they're out and out strikers. So I think we need to buy two out and out strikers. Uh, certainly players who can play there. I think Berahino will be bought. I know people have kind of gone off him, but I would be surprised after all this time and all this stuff that if he wasn't going to be bought, I think he will be. And I think we would need one other. Now, we've talked about this a lot. A lot of people play, are saying Batshuayi. He looks good on YouTube, but, you know, Tom Huddleston looked like a world beater on YouTube. So I can't say for sure. You know, I can't say I've watched 20 uh, Ligue, Ligue 1 games in France uh, of Marseille. I can't say he's a fantastic brilliant striker every day, uh, every game. But there are people who um, uh, compare him to Didier Drogba. Now, I think Harry Kane is quite similar to Didier Drogba, but without the kind of attitude in terms of what he can, what he can do on the pitch. His hold-up play is excellent. Uh, he's not the quickest in the world, but he's got a yard of pace. He can beat someone. He never gives up, and he's a top-class finisher. If we could have another player of that ilk on the books, challenging Harry Kane, someone with the attitude, you know, I know it's hard to believe, but someone with the attitude that says, I can be better than Harry Kane then that would be an amazing thing for Tottenham Hotspur to have next season. Because then when you have the opportunity or the necessity to go 4-4-2, like yesterday I was saying it at 2-0, I was even saying it at 2-1, the guy next to me was saying, no, it's too early. I was saying, no, we need to go 4-4-2. Because sometimes it's not just about going 4-4-2 for the sake of your own team. It's about going two up front and having another threat to push the opposition backwards. So they think, oh, we've got something else to think about. Now, Newcastle were playing deep the whole time, but... If we could have kept more of the ball and had more of an aerial threat getting crosses in, you know, if we could cross it, we weren't crossing it very well yesterday, but if we could have done that, you never know, we might have got that second goal, even when we were 3-1 down to put pressure on. I'm just saying we need someone else uh, to compliment Harry Kane and give us another option. You know, Leicester won the title playing a 4-4-2. I'm not saying Pochettino will do that because I don't think he will. He seems pretty stuck in his ways when it comes to 4-2-3-1 and it's, you know, it's worked for us all season, so I don't mind that, but... I wouldn't mind the option playing 4 4 2. And, yes, and yesterday, when uh, I felt we needed it, Nasser Chadley, he's just, his, his runs aren't, they're not suited to a, a 4 4 2. So that's my fourth point. I think we need two more strikers. Let me know in the comment section below who you'd like to come in and whether you think I'm right in terms of needing two more strikers. My final point today, it's more of a, you know, it's more of a call to arms, really. I, I, I know it must have been hard for all of you, it's been hard for me in the office today. Um, and hard for you last night and today getting abuse from fans of them down the road, fans from Leicester, fans from Chelsea, everyone. It's tough going into work when it's been such a difficult turnover. But remember this, I think this is an important thing to think about, okay? I don't think any of you, or at least I'd be very surprised if any of you could say you don't love Spurs at the moment. You don't love where Spurs have come from. You don't love where Spurs are heading. You don't love the season we've had. You don't love the manager. And you don't love, a, you know, the whole first 11 that we would pick and a few others from the squad. I think I'd be surprised if any of you said that. So remember that when Woolwich fans are getting in your ear, all right? Because let's face it, you know, I wrote this on Facebook. I agree with it. Let's face it. We are only one win away from 
forgetting about the last four games of the season. When we get that win early next season, hopefully in the first game, we'll forget about it. We'll remember in the Champions League. We've got Champions League nights. It's going to be an exciting time at Tottenham Hotspur. We've got a new stadium to come. We'll have new players to, to wonder, are they going to be the next Deli Alley? Are they going to be the next Toby Alderweireld? So remember that. We're only one game away from forgetting all that. The team down the road, they're only one loss away from wanting their manager out again, from wanting the chairman, the owner out, from wanting half of their squad out, Walcott, Oxlade-Chamberlain, Giroud, loads of them. They hate their club. They hate their club. And they hate everything about it. And they are angry after everything. They're just having their day in the sun that they had yesterday. All right. And they're going to talk about the 21 years. Fine. Let them talk about it. As far as I'm concerned, the feeling of loving my club and loving where we're going and being excited by the potential of our club is way better than having one day's bragging rights of yesterday or today or a summer's bragging rights they're going to have over this summer. But that will be forgotten about. And I think we are driving forward to make not just one season where we might finish above them, like Arsene Wenger said. He said it would be a one-off if it happened. No, we're talking about putting together a legacy with Pochettino for the next five, maybe ten years on from there with a new stadium where we can finish above them every single season and switch things around. I feel confident and positive about that. Sure, come on our channel, abuse me, I really don't care. But that's how I feel about it. And I think deep down, I think that's how all the Spurs fans feel about it. And I know from the way Maurizio Pochettino reacted yesterday, and he's been reacting all season, I know that that is something that he wants and is determined to build at our club. Anyway, guys, that's been my five things that I felt we learned from the Newcastle game. It's been a great season. Thank you for watching all the five things we learned. We'll continue getting content out over the summer, definitely, but already excited for the start of next season and what Spurs can do to build on what has been mainly, in the main, a great season, apart from those last few games. Guys, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook, Spurred on TV. And keep supporting the club you love. Come on, you Spurs. Hi, everyone. It's Barnaby for Spurred on. This is a um, very, very difficult moment. Uh, it's obviously my match review after Tottenham lost 5-1 away to Newcastle in a game where we only needed a point to guarantee second place 